Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about um, a case from the 90s, the case of Jennifer Lynn. She was a young girl, she was only 14 when unfortunately she was murdered. It's an incredibly sad case and it's still unsolved, so I really wanted to talk about it today. Because we do have kind of an idea of who they think could have done it. Like there's a sketch... Uh, and they thought they had someone at one point who ended up being a serial killer, but they just weren't sure. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So all the links I used for research will be down below, and let's go ahead and get into this. So Jennifer Lynn, she also went by Jenny. She was just a 14-year-old girl that was living her life to the fullest. She had just turned 14 at the time, and she was actually looking forward to being a high school student. So she's described as being a popular middle school student who was talented in dance, piano, and violin. She actually excelled at violin in particular and was even invited to join the Castro Valley Chamber Orchestra. So this actually also takes place in Castro Valley, California, by the way. She also excelled academically and she received straight A's. And she is also described as being vibrant and easygoing. So, back in 1994, the Paulo Mayer's Hills Housing Development was a new neighborhood in Castro Valley, and a lot of the people that lived there had moved to that neighborhood because they wanted the safety and beauty that was offered by Castro Valley Hills, and that also included the Lin family. So, the Lins were actually first-generation immigrants from Taiwan, and they settled in the U.S. with the hope of giving their kids a safe life and a hopeful future. So, the last time anybody would see her alive or her family would see her alive, would be two days after her 14th birthday, when her father, John, dropped her off at school the morning of Friday, May 27th, 1994. And the sad thing is, her father, John, would also make the discovery that same evening of Jenny's body murdered in their own home. So that evening of uh, May 27th, John would discover... Jennifer's body, um, not, not long after 6 p.m. that evening, um, and unfortunately, her life had been taken by multiple stab wounds. She was bound with duct tape, and her clothes were partially removed. There didn't seem to be, like, a sign of struggle or even a motive, but there was a broken window that police believe was used by the killer to gain entry to the house. And the window of time for the crime to actually occur was small because one of Jenny's friends would come forward and say that they spoke on the phone with Jenny at 5.15 p.m. And John found Jenny dead at 6.45 p.m. So the time for this to happen, for the break-in and the murder to occur, to occur was actually fairly small. Um, there was not really any evidence or witness testimony that police could go with or work with. But that was until a neighbor would come forward four months later, and they said that they had heard glass breaking and saw a man outside the Lynn's house. So after his daughter was murdered, John would actually tell police about a strange interaction he had had with a man outside of a BART, which is a Bay Area rapid transit station, that he commuted to work from. So before her murder, he said that he really didn't think anything of it, but now he was thinking it's a little weird. So, 15 days earlier, on May 12th, a man had approached John um, at the BART and told him that he had his daughter. John ignored the man, but like a good father, he would check on his daughters anyway, and they would both be fine. There was nothing strange going on. Um, and a sketch has been released of the man, but he's never been identified. Um, they'd... Authorities say that they don't believe that he has anything to do with the death, but they would like to speak with him anyway, because you don't just go up to people and say, I have your daughter. That's incredibly weird. And maybe a bit concerning, because you never know. It could have been him. It could have been a weirdo that had been stalking John and the family. Um, so there were almost no developments for over a decade. But then we would get a possible break in the case, and that is when police would announce their first and only suspect on May 25th, 2006. And this is the serial killer that I had mentioned before. So who is this 
serial killer. Well, his name was Sebastian Shaw, and he was arrested in Oregon for multiple homicides he had committed between 1991 and 1992. So he had originally been tied to Jenny's case after he was arrested with a car and two rifles that were stolen from San Ramon, California. And San Ramon is about 20 minutes away from Castro Valley. So <clears throat> the police could not name or fully investigate him. Um, until this time because they were investigating him in Oregon and they didn't want to interfere with that investigation. So um, they wanted to make sure that, you know, I guess they got him for something at least. However, on May 27th, 2007, the DA's office said that they would not be pressing charges against Sebastian Shaw for Jenny's murder because of lack of evidence, which to be fair, I mean, maybe they just didn't release all of it to the public. Um, but if all the evidence they have is what I just mentioned, that's definitely not enough evidence to go after someone. Um, although it is a, a decent theory, I guess. But, I mean, surely they would have more, but if that's really all they had, yeah, they, they would have to let him go, unfortunately. Or at least not press charges for that murder. But at the time, the police would reaffirm that they will continue to look for evidence and that Shaw remains their only suspect. On October 4th, 2021, Sebastian Shaw would actually die in prison without ever being charged for Jennifer's murder. So, today the case is still unsolved, but because it's in the public view, it was all thanks to the advocacy of the Jenny Lynn Foundation. So this foundation was actually created by John and May Leanne Lynn in 1995. And they created it to advocate and hopefully solve Jenny's case. And there's actually a reward for information uh, for any information that could lead to an arrest or anything like that in this case of $200,000. And that was updated in 2022. So it's been 28 years, 29 years since she was killed in her home. And the family is still searching for the killer after all these years. And they actually still hold vigils and marches for her. And this is actually a quote from May Leanne Lynn, uh, Ginny's mom. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her, her name wrong. But she says, and this is a direct quote, she says, We think about her and we ask ourselves, is this what Ginny would want us to do? And that's what keeps us going. And then there's a quote from John, her father, and he says, We are still pretty frustrated that after all these years, the case is still not solved. However, we are encouraged. And the reason why they are encouraged is because there has been new technology that may have led to a breakthrough in the case. Um, and this is a little tidbit comes from the Alameda County Sheriff, Greg Ahern. Um, and he says that all the evidence has been reexamined with new DNA technology, which allows them to extract new cells and has given them new leads. And a quote from Greg Ahern says, We have a couple of possibilities that we are holding close to our vest. We want to make sure we don't disclose too much to a potential suspect. End quote. So May Leanne says that it's been really hard just being, you know, a mother over all these years and having lost her daughter. Um, but she says that it's a parent's commitment to justice uh, to their daughter. And that's why they're still doing this. And she says, and this is a quote, It is very hard, but we have learned how to manage it. We know it's sad, but we also know that we need to find justice for Jenny. End quote. So if you have any information regarding the case, or even information about the man that had threatened a John outside of BART, you can contact the Alameda County Sheriff's Department at 510-667-7721 or the Jenny Lynn Foundation's tip line at 855 4 Jenny Lynn. So the Alameda County Sheriff's Department number again is 510-667-7721 or the Jenny Lynn Foundation's tip line 855-4-JENNY-LYNN. So that is what I have for you guys about Jennifer Lynn. A beautiful girl, so talented, had such a bright future ahead of her, and then it was taken from her. And to just think, poor John, too, to be a parent just coming home I assume probably from work a long day and then you find your daughter savagely murdered in your home I can't imagine how traumatizing that had to have been for him and probably still is and to know that you came home and you saw 
what sicko did to your daughter and almost 30 years later you're still trying to find the person that did it oh my gosh but honestly if i was a parent i would be doing the exact same thing if i was in his in his position i would not stop so i think that may leanne and john are incredible for what they're doing and they are so tough because i can't imagine how hard this has had to have been on them and her sister um i never saw her name mentioned but I assume that it could only have been just as hard for her as well. So, what do you guys think? I'm really wondering what new leads they have from that new technology. It would be really interesting to see if it was a complete stranger, maybe someone that knew the family, and who knows, maybe uh, the DNA after being re-examined could lead them uh, maybe to the man that threatened John outside of Bart. Maybe it could have been that man the entire time. I just don't know why. I mean, I know there are people that are just sick and weird and twisted. And maybe he was just doing it to see what John would do. He gets a thrill out of being a weirdo. But I feel like maybe he, maybe not even necessary Jenny, but he's done it before. Like, I just don't see just a normal person doing that. So I kind of feel like he's, he's, that man was just a walking red flag, literally. So, what do you think? Do you think it could have been the man at the train station? Or do you think that was just a weirdo, sick man? Do you think it could have been Sebastian Shaw? Or do you think that was fairly far-fetched? I kind of do. But, like I said, they could have just withheld information, so we don't know. Or do you think that it's one of these new leads that they haven't said anything about? Let me know your thoughts down below. But thank you guys so much for listening to Jenny's story. She, I can't imagine if she had still been with us today, she probably would have been doing such amazing things with her life. So thank you so much for listening to her story. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.